I have found this interesting divisibility problem. And uh, let me recast this. This says 39 divides the sum of two large exponentials. An other way of saying that is that, um, let's see, that's 53 to the 103. Summed with kind of its reverse, I guess. The base and the exponent actually shift roles here. Okay. Divided by 39 is equal to some natural number. Okay. Or it's a, a it wouldn't be a proper fact, fraction. This just actually turns into a natural number. And that's what this says. I rewrote it like this. Okay. Now, right here, what he meant, and it's, it's clear in context, but really that should be enveloped in parentheses right there. It's, it's pretty clear what it means, but this divides bar uh, means 39 divides this entire quantity in parentheses, okay? So another way of rewriting it's like this, where n is a natural number, and, and in, in, more, in more general terms, you can write it this way. Yet another way to write it is in congruence notation. This reads that... Uh, this quantity minus zero is divisible by 39. Now this congruence, this modular arithmetic is actually quite nice and that's why I prefer the, the form. Uh, there's, a, there's a very well-known result from number theory that helps you reduce these huge exponentials uh, mod uh, n. Now right here, this result right here, it says a to the phi of n is congruent to one mod n. This is called the totient function. The assumption being made right here is that a and n are co-prime, relatively prime. Sometimes that's written, or frequently it's written like this. The GCD of the two numbers is equal to one. They share no common factors. As long as that happens, uh, as long as A is not a multiple of n, um, you know, this, this result is going to work. And notice congruent to one works out very nicely. Now, what is this phi of n? It's the number of values less than or equal to n that are relatively prime to n. For example, uh, let me see if I can make that simple. For example, a phi evaluated, no, it's supposed to be a phi, I promise. Phi, ev phi evaluated at 8 would equal to 4. The reason being uh, 1, 3, five and seven are relatively prime to eight. Okay, these four numbers are relatively prime to eight and that's why phi at eight is equal to four. Now, I won't, I won't attempt to prove this. It's kind of neat. It's based on the order of an element. But anyway, this result holds as long as you elevate this base to this number, okay? Now, phi at 39, it's, you, we could count those directly, but another way to do that is there's a result from number theory that says this would be equal to 39, and then you go like this. You consider the reciprocals, 1 minus the reciprocal of each of the prime uh, factors. 39 is 3 times 13, right? 39 is 3 times 13. Those are two prime numbers. So there's a result from number theory that says you can do this more computationally efficiently by uh, doing 1 minus the reciprocal of all the prime divisors of the number of interest. So uh, this would be 1 minus 1 over 13. You guys can verify that this product, and you can see everything cancels out actually. You can almost see it from here. This would be 12 over 13. This would be 2 over 3. Everything cancels out and you end up getting 24. Notice that saves us the trouble of listing all of the relatively prime values less than 39. This is a result that saves you that trouble, okay? So now we know that 53, uh, 53 uh, raised to the phi of 39 is the same as 53 to the 24th, and that's congruent to 139. Now we're going to use that result uh, to work with this very first term right here, okay? And y'all notice this is just all laws of exponents, okay? So since we know that 53 to the 24th is congruent to 1, it makes sense to do this. 4 times 24, or 24 times 4 is 96, right? 24 times 4 uh, equals to 96, all right? And then 96 plus 7 is this 103. 
So you see, all of this is just congruent to one, right? We just, that's what this says right up here, congruent to one. And so all that's left is 53 to the seventh, okay? So we have a smaller exponential to reduce. Now, there may be another way to do this, but I just did it like this. I wrote 53 to the seventh is 53 squared cubed times 53 to the first power. We'll put that one. It's superfluous, but you get six plus one is seven, right? Now, this took a, to do this by hand is a little bit tedious, but 53 squared is 2809. Now, uh, where does this one come from? Well, 2809. 2809 is equal to, I believe, let me, I have that written down, 72 uh, times 39 plus 1. Okay, so modular arithmetic is sometimes called remainder arithmetic. Uh, and, and it all satisfies stuff. You see, if you subtract one from 2009, you get this, but this is a multiple of 39. That's the definition of a congruence, okay? So this one that you see right here, I just left it there just for, is this one right here, okay? And so, of course, one cubed is one, and so you get 14. So you see, we know that 53 to the 103 is congruent to 14, all right? Now, remember, we have to deal with this one also, and I'm not going to go through all the same detail, but 103, uh, right up here, 103 to the 53rd has to be processed or reduced also, mod 39, which is done here on the very next line, okay? So you see what we get right here is 14 for 53 to the 103, and we get 25. And again, I'll leave out these steps here. This was a little bit easier, but we did the very same thing, 103 to the 24th. 103 is... Uh, relatively prime to 39. So you can do the same thing with the 24, okay? In other words, um, remember this the object of uh, 39 is equal to 24. Okay, so that's where we use the very same value for the totient function. And so uh, a lot of this stuff reduces very, very fast. 103 to the 24th is congruent to 1, okay? 103 raised to the 24th power is congruent to 1. You see how important this is? In other words, who would want to raise that up and then try to reduce it modulo 39? That would be very tedious and almost certain error would occur, right? So this part just becomes 1. That's why we have 103 to the 5th. And uh, the rest of this, oh yeah, 103. Uh, what, where did I get the 25? Uh, 103 uh, okay, is equal to, uh, one, excuse me, 103 is congruent to 25. All right, and that's easy to see. 103 minus 25 is 78, right? So 103 is congruent to 25. You can verify that. And then you end up with this statement. In 5 raised to any power, that's just, that, that's very straightforward to show, is going to end any, any power greater, you know, 5 squared is 25, 5 cubed is 625. I know that's not technically a proof, but uh, we're going to go ahead and take this as a fact. 5 raised to any power greater than one uh, is going to be uh, is going to end in the digits 25. Therefore, it's going to be congruent to 25. Uh, that'll be its remainder, right? So that's uh, that's what we get here. And so we get the 25 and the 14. And guess what? Here's our original problem: congruent to 14 plus 35, but 39 is a multiple of 39. So this proves the result we set out to prove, folks. We showed that. Uh, this object is congruent to zero, meaning that 39, the way the gentleman worded it, uh, 39 divides the quantity. Again, I prefer the parentheses. Uh, 53 to the 103 power. The thing about modular arithmetic, it can be confusing or, or easy. There's like three ways to write down congruences, and depending on what you're doing, one form may be a little bit easier than another form. But 103 uh, to the 53rd. And nothing was really special about the bases 
and the exponent's being reversed. It looks, it's kind of optical, but it, it didn't have any bearing on the way the problem was solved, I don't think, or nothing that I could d discern. But anyway, that, uh, we proved what we set out to prove, folks. Uh, a huge unpronounceable number is indeed divisible without 39 without doing any more involved calculations than doing 53 squared e equaling 2809. Nothing else, with, none of the other computations were that taxing. So anyway, uh, hope you enjoyed the problem. That's all.